So remember Monday, Tuesday, we were doing the first derivative test for velocity. What do you guess we're doing today? Second derivative test for acceleration. Now we're going to warm up with a little table problem. Okay, James is riding his bike to school. His velocity is recorded at various times. Find the average rate of change of his velocity average rate of change, not instantaneous rate of change. If it's an average, it's your slope formula. So what would I write? A rock, good. So it would be V of 10 minus V of 6 over 10 minus 6. Now before we keep going, we're going to indicate units of measure. What are my velocities both measured in? meters per second. What's my time on the bottom measured in? Seconds. So if this is meters per second and this is seconds, then my overall units are going to be meters per second squared. squared, which is like an acceleration -y thing, right, in physics? Okay. So you connect the dots there. So V of 10 is 15 minus. V of 6 is 10. 10 minus 6 is 4, so I get 5 fourths meters per second squared. Okay, now part B says approximate V prime at 3. So think about, can I find the derivative if I don't have the equation? No, that's what V prime is, it's the tangent slope. But since I don't have the equation, I can approximate it by using an A rock. But I want to choose an interval where two will be, or I'm sorry, where three will be between the endpoints. Two to four. Very good. So is it the exact V prime of three? No. But is it an estimation? Yes. Because instead of having the tangent slope, I'm taking the slope around <coughs> that point. So V prime of 3 is approximated by, bless you, uh, V of 4 minus V of 2 over 4 minus 2. V of 4 is 12 minus 15. 4 minus 2 is 2. What's my answer at the end? Negative what? 3 over 2. Now think about units. They're going to be the same. This is meters per second, this is seconds, so it would be meters per second squared. Okay, now, as I told you, I think, just a minute ago, the derivative of velocity is acceleration. The derivative of velocity is acceleration. That means that acceleration is the slope of velocity. It's the rate or the slope that velocity is changing. So the sign of acceleration tells you whether velocity is increasing or decreasing. So when my acceleration is greater than zero, my velocity is increasing. When my acceleration switch it to a less than zero, then I know my velocity is decreasing. So this is a little bit different because normally when we're doing a second derivative test, we're checking for concavity, right? Okay, we're looking at F double prime and then F's concavity. Usually for particle motion, the AP test is going to cover it like this, acceleration versus velocity. And it's going to stress those relationships to each other, not the concavity side of things. So when my acceleration is positive, what did we say my velocity is doing? Increasing. When my acceleration is negative, thank you, then my velocity is decreasing. 
Thank you. Okay. Now, does that also mean that your position is concave up or concave down? Yes. But that's just not usually something that they would check. Okay. So, uh, come down to number one, and we're going to run through some questions. Okay, now some of this is review and some of it is new. So, first thing says initial velocity. Is that new? No. What does initial mean? What time? Time zero. So, I want the velocity at zero. Now, question, do I need to take the derivative if I have already been given velocity? No, in this case, I'm using what they already gave me. So I'd have 0 minus 0 plus 36. How many? Okay, <coughs> then it says, which direction is the car moving at this time? Well, if my velocity is positive 36, then I'm going in the positive direction, so my car is going forward. So car moving forward because v of 0 is positive. Now, what if my velocity had been negative? Then my graph, my car would be going in reverse, right? Okay, part B says, when is the car at rest? What do I do with velocity? Equal to 0. My velocity graph I can see, or equation here is all divisible by 3, so I'm going to do that first. Take out the 3, I get t squared minus 24. Oops, sorry, 8 because I took the 3 out, and then 12. Yeah? From here, what can multiply to 12 and add to negative 8? Negative 6, negative 2. Very good. Which means that my car will be at rest at the zeros or the solutions, which would be what? Very good. Okay, come over to when is the car traveling forward. I'm doing a line test. 2 and 6 are both going to go on my line test. Say I plug in 0. 0 minus 6, 0 minus 2 both come out negative, but when I multiply them, I get a positive. Okay, then between 2 and 6, say I pick 3. 3 minus 6 is negative. 3 minus 2 is positive. And then after 6, say I pick 7. 7 minus 6, 7 minus 2 are both positive. Multiply them together, you still get a positive. This is velocity. It's telling me what position is doing. When my velocity is positive, my position is increasing. When my velocity is negative, my position is decreasing. So what intervals is the car moving forward on? 0 to 2 union, 6 to infinity, because velocity greater than 0. So far, so good? All review to there. Now, part D says find the acceleration at any time. What's that now? The derivative. Can I just write the derivative? Think about what we did last time. What would I write? Acceleration equals what? V prime. Good. Okay. And then from there, I'll actually take the derivative. So look at your little guy up here. We're taking the derivative. What am I going to get? 6t minus 24. Okay, then in part E, it says find the acceleration at 1. Well, then what do I need to do? Plug in 1. Well, then I get 6 times 1, which is still 6 minus 24. So I get negative 18. Yes, because it says at any time, so that means like an equation, basically. Okay, so then it says interpret in the context of the problem using correct units. That's your ton of information. Okay, T stands for time. You have to include units. You have to use the noun in the problem. So what's the noun in the problem? The car. So at time t equals one second the car's velocity because remember this is v prime right if it's negative 18 what is the car's velocity doing increasing or decreasing 
decreasing. Is decreasing 18, this is measured in feet, so feet per second squared. U is units, N is the noun. So time, units, noun. And remember that your units applies to two places. You have to put units on the time and then also on what you're measuring. So I would need to put seconds and feet per second squared for it to count as correct units. Okay? Last parts. F and G ask for when velocity is increasing or decreasing. That means I need to do a second derivative test. So remember, a derivative test on velocity tells you the direction of the particle. A sign chart on acceleration tells you whether the velocity is increasing or decreasing. Do you have a question? Um, yeah? Because it's so, because the acceleration is negative, remember that's the slope that tells me if velocity is going up or down. Yeah? So I'm saying the velocity is decreasing at 18 feet per second because the acceleration is the slope, is negative. Okay? So set up your second derivative test here. And in order for me to do a second derivative test, what do I need to set the second derivative equal to? Zero. zero. Now, my second derivative is right here, yeah? So I'm going to let zero equal 6t minus 24. I can factor out a 6. What does that leave me with? t minus 4, which means my critical number is what? 4. Then since zero wasn't a critical number, I'm going to plug in zero. 0 minus 4 is negative. Then say I pick 5. 5 minus 4 is positive. Which means, this is acceleration, that what was my velocity doing? It was decreasing, then increasing. Now, what would that tell us about position? That it would have been concave down and then concave up. So remember, it matters now that you label your number line because that determines whether you're putting the concavity stuff or the increasing, decreasing stuff. Okay, so when is the velocity increasing? What interval? 4 to infinity because v of t greater than 0. When is the car's velocity decreasing? I would put 0 to 4 because v of t less than 0. Make sense? Okay, turn the page. Now, I want to point out to you, why did I only have to take the derivative once to get to acceleration? What did they start me with? Velocity. Velocity. Now, when you turn the page, what are they starting you with? Position. Position. So that means that if I want to get to acceleration, how many derivatives are you going to end up having to take? Two. Two. Okay, I'm going to run through this one with you, then you're going to do the next one on your own. So it says, a particle is moving along the x-axis, its position is modeled by blah, 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 measured in feet, time is measured in seconds. Find the velocity at any time means it's going to stay in equation. So velocity equals what? What do I put first? No, what do I put first? Yep. Okay, now tell me what you're saying. Three t squared minus 24t plus 36. And remember, that's at any time, because you could plug in whatever time you want and get the answer. K part b, when is the particle at rest? What do I do? Set it equal to 0, yeah? So I can take out a 3 here. t squared minus 8t plus 12. And sad day, what do you notice about your numbers? They're exactly the same. So we're going to just copy all of our work and skip a lot of it. Okay, if you don't know what I mean, this is the ex minus the 3. That's exactly the question we just did. So skip down to the important part, which is here. Okay, so my first derivative test, we're going to just draw it. Remember your critical numbers were 2 and 6? Oh, yeah. 
and it went plus minus plus, yeah? Okay, then your acceleration, your critical number was what? Do you remember? Four, and it went minus plus, yeah? Okay, so then remember, when I do my acceleration, that tells me if velocity is increasing or decreasing. Okay, come down to my little part right here that says true or false. Okay, I'm gonna read you the statement, tell me if you think it's true or false. Whenever velocity is increasing, the particle is speeding up. That is false. Okay, um, think about it for a second. If the velocity is increasing, you automatically know your particle is speeding up. That is not true. This is why. If I'm speeding up to the negative direction, what's going to be happening to my velocities? It'd be negative 2, then negative 4, then negative 6, then negative 8, right? I'd be getting faster, but what's happening to my values? They're decreasing because I'm going down the y-axis. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's how you tell if your speed is increasing or decreasing. Okay, your speed will be increasing when velocity and acceleration have the same sign. And your speed will be decreasing when velocity and acceleration have opposite. signs. The easiest real world example for me to give you is think about if you throw a baseball up in the air, just straight up and then straight down. Your velocity when you throw it is which direction? Uh, but what's gravity? Yeah. Pulling down. So what happens to the ball? It starts going faster, then it slows down, then eventually it turns around because your velocity is positive, gravity is negative, those fi uh, forces are like against each other. Versus, if you, when it gets to the top, what happens? It goes kind of slow, and then it accelerates down and starts going faster. Why? Because at that point, the velocity is down, gravity is also down, those forces are working together. Make sense? But don't overcomplicate it. You're looking for same signs for speeding up, opposite signs for uh, slowing down. Okay, so come right here. Uh, we need our acceleration function to do the next part. So take the derivative here, it'd be 6t minus 24, which remember is the same off of the problem that we just did. Okay, so in part i it says, determine whether the speed is increasing or decreasing at one. There are two things that you would have to find. The velocity at one and the acceleration at one. Now come back up to your velocity equation Okay, it's right here. If I plug in 1 to that, I'd have 3 times 1 minus 24 times 1 plus 36, yeah? Okay, so it'd be 3 minus 24 plus 36. Now, I don't even care about the number. I only care about the sign. Does it come out positive or will it come out negative? Which one? Positive. Okay, now let's find the acceleration at 1. 6 times 1 minus 24. Don't care about the number, just the sign. How's it going to come out? Less than zero. So if my velocity is positive, but my acceleration is negative, what is the speed doing? Decreasing. Very good. So I would say my speed is decreasing at t equals 1 because v of 1 and a of 1 have opposite signs. Now, in that case, they're giving you one time value and they're asking you to check for that one time value. The other thing that they could do is ask you the intervals where the speed is increasing. In that case, you're going to have to do a double line chart. Okay, if you want speed increasing and you have to list intervals, 
you're going to do a double line chart. Now, this is not hard because you already did both of the line charts. So we're just going to copy them next to each other. So here and here, this is my velocity line chart. This is my acceleration line chart. And I'm just going to copy them from part C and part G. So 2 and 6 are my critical numbers. And it went plus, minus, plus. Then for acceleration, 4 was my critical number. And it went minus, plus. If I want speed increasing, what do I want those signs to be? The same. So, shade on your number lines where they're the same. What intervals? Okay, six, 6 to infinity and 2 to 4. Now, think about if these are both positive, my particle was speeding up forward in those cases. But if they're both negative, it was just speeding up going backwards. Okay? So, you would say from 2 to 4, union, 6 to infinity. because v of t and a of t have the same signs. Okay? Because v of t and a of t have the same signs. They're either both plus or they're both minus. That indicates speeding up. Okay, I brought you cookies. But you have to do the next problem on your own all the way to, well, you can do it with a friend if you want, but I mean like without me doing it. Okay, all the way to part G. You should be able to do it all the way to part G, and I'm going to bring you a cookie. Okay, you can do it. You have position at the top. And you can look back at your notes if you need help. I mean, it's all the same kind of cookie, but I'll start here. Yeah. I'll start with you, specifically. Uh, do you want to grab mine? And no, I'm good. Okay. I did video. It's just the, it's just the yeah. Yes. And so when you want velocity increasing or decreasing, you need acceleration to be positive or negative. The only tricky one is speed. Is what we just did. They have to be the same.
origin would be zero. So like, what was your position? Was it eight, right? So then think about the origins here. He's starting eight above. So he's already above. And then what was your velocity? Six. He's also positive. That means that he's going up or down. Up. So he's already above. And he's going up. And he's going up. Is it usually meters? No. Meters per second. Acceleration is meters per second. I don't know that. I'm sure you guys did really good. I'm really glad. That's velocity, and then set that equal to zero. You never set the original equal to zero. The only reason we did on the front is because they started you off. That's why we didn't have to take the derivative because they gave you velocity right off the cuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because the position. So don't look at this. You need to just use these two. And these should actually have zeros in the Because you're talking about at time zero, right? So at zero, what's your position? Eight, eight above, right? Because it's a positive eight. So here's the origin, here's your particle, it's above. Then what's your velocity? Positive 60, which means it's going up or down. Traveling up. So it's already above, and then it's traveling up. You don't need this until now. Change direction is just a change in sign, right? Change in direction is a change in sign for the first direction, so yes. I just can't. It's actually shockingly better than like, because now that I like have some more and stuff I use, I'll go through and check, but like the first few years it'll be like A, B, C, and B, because I copy stuff off of stuff. Yeah, well, like, if this was a plus sign, and then it goes to I. Oh, no, is there an H? Because it shows. I don't know if it's really like that. Right, but, I mean, like, usually. Okay, so this needs to go here. So, so don't erase it, but I want you to find if it's initial position, that's going to be x of 0 for initial position and then b of 0 for initial position. You see what I'm saying? Initial position is plug in 0, 
and initial velocity is plug in zero to the derivative. So let's plug in zero to position first. What do you get? Hang on, wait, you're plugging in zero though. Well, to x of t is the top thing. Oh. I was yeah. And think about it, this is a zero. It's zero minus zero minus zero plus eight. So it's just only the eight. I was I was playing it at this time. Gotcha. Okay, and then velocity is here. So zero plus zero plus sixty. So then think about it. on the number line, if his position is positive, is he starting off above or below the origin? He's starting off above, and then which way is he traveling? Away. Very good. Yes. Okay, Colton, this is for you. So these are both good. This actually goes somewhere for part C. Uh, you need to think about, so your position was what? So is it above or below at the beginning? It's so already above. And then your velocity was positive, that means it's going up. So if it's already above... Some of us seem to be, I don't know, doing great, and others seem to be less motivated. Okay, so I want to talk about Part B, because I've been trying to answer questions individually, but it seems like a lot of people don't know what to do. Initial position, you are plugging in zero. Okay, initial means time is zero, not set equal to zero, not the same. So you plug in zero, you just get the eight. Then you plug in zero to velocity, you just get the 60, yeah? Okay, those two pieces tell you if he's going towards or away from the origin. Think about if his position is eight, what does that mean about his position? Is he above or below the origin on the y-axis? He is already above the origin. And then which way is he traveling if his velocity is positive 60? He is traveling up. So if he's already above, and then he's also traveling up, is he going towards or away? Therefore, away. Okay. Um, from there, for part C, you should have done a line chart. You should have labeled it V of T and X of T. Your position changes direction at 2 and at 5 because Y velocity changes sign. When is the particle traveling up? What two intervals? And then 5 to infinity, I would say because velocity greater than 0, if it asked, which it doesn't. Traveling down would be 2 to 5 because velocity less than 0. 
Okay, part D, acceleration. You can't just take the derivative, you have to label it. So A of T equals V prime. And then I would come back to here to take the derivative. So I would have gotten 12T minus 42. The plus 60 obviously goes away because it's a constant, derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, set it uh, in part, so at that point I'm done, yeah? Says at any time, so that means my equation is my answer. Okay, part E says find where the velocity is increasing. Remember that velocity is increasing when its slope is positive. Velocity is increasing when its slope is positive. You need to do a line test. So set it equal to zero. 12 T minus 42. What can I take out of both of those? Six. Six. That gives me 2t minus 7, which means that my critical number is 7 halves. Let's say I plug in 0. 0 minus 7 is negative. Multiply it by 6, it will stay negative. Second term, say I pick uh, 100. That would be 200 minus 7 is positive. So that means that my velocity, remember I plugged into acceleration, that tells me what velocity is doing was decreasing then increasing. So when would I say the velocity is increasing? On what interval? On 7 halves to infinity. Because A of T greater than 0. All right, now come down to part F. This is asking you about speed. What two things have to match? Velocity and acceleration. So you should have done a double line chart. I'm going to put velocity on top, acceleration on bottom. Um, okay, if you can do it in your head, no. But up to you. Okay, so my first derivatives would be 2 and 5. It went plus, minus, plus. And my second derivative, 7 halves, is 3.5. So I would want to make sure I line it up between the 2 and the 5 on my second number line. Then it went minus, plus. When do I have the same sign? What intervals? Yes, they're both negative. And then when are they both positive? 5 to infinity. Okay? So then I would say I have the same sign on 2 to 7 halves union 5 to infinity because V of T and A of T have the same sign. Okay? Do we understand the difference? Velocity increasing or decreasing, you only need acceleration. But speed, you need both. Yes? Okay, mm -hmm. letter G. The AP test loves to randomly introduce the second particle. So you have your particle that we already did a bunch of crap on. Now we have a second particle B. And it gives you his velocity. And it says, when are the particles traveling in opposite directions? Okay, think about what tells you direction, position, velocity, or acceleration? Velocity. And if I want them going opposite directions, what do their velocities need to be? Opposite signs, yeah? So I'm going to have to do a line test. I'm going to go ahead and write the velocity of A because I already know it. It was 2, 5, plus, minus, plus. But then I need to know velocity B's sign chart. They gave me the equation, but I'm going to have to actually find all that stuff. So take this, set it equal to 0. What can I take out of t squared minus 4t? OK, what's left over? t minus 4, which means my critical numbers are what? 0 and 4. Now, if 0 is also an end point, then do I need to list it uh, as a critical number? Okay, technically it is a critical number, but we know there won't be a sign change. So put 4 in the middle. If I plug in, let's say, 1, 
I'd have 1 times 1 minus 4. What's the sign? Negative. Then let's say 5 times 5 minus 4 would be positive. I want opposite signs. Where does that happen? 0 to 2 because 1's plus and 1's minus and then also from 4 to 5 because 4 to 5 my A is moving left because it's negative but my B is moving right. Does that make sense? Okay, try to answer part I. So I'd say from 0 to 2, Okay, think about part, that last part, what you would have to do there. Okay, what would you have to do on that next part? Find the acceleration and then do a double line chart. Very good. Okay, so find the acceleration for me, please. And now, how could I make it different from my other A? What could I do as like a little subscript? A, B of T, very good, is V prime of T for B. And now I'm going to take the derivative again. So t squared minus 4t, what's the derivative? 2t minus, minus 4. Set it equal to 0. Take out a 2. What's left over? t minus 2, which means what's my critical number? 2. And then I'm going to line it up right underneath velocity b so that I don't have to draw it again. So this is acceleration B. My critical number was 2. And remember, you want to kind of align your number line so that it makes sense, right? Okay, and then to the left of 2, say I pick 0. 0 minus 2 is negative. 3 minus 2 is positive. Now, I want my particles speeding up. That means same sign or opposite signs? Same signs. Where does that happen? 0 to 2, they're both negative, and then 4 to infinity, they're both positive. So 0 to 2, union, 4 to infinity. Because AB and VB are the same sign. How do you feel about that? Good? Okay. Turn. Nope. Mm -hmm. And remember, if they're both positive, you would say it's in it's speeding up backwards, right? And then if they're both positive, it's speeding up going forward. Okay. Oh, we only have four minutes. Okay, we're gonna write the top, and then we won't finish. Okay. You won't forget. Velocity <laughs> is zero for at rest. Nobody, nobody write it down. Nobody write it down. Brendan, you have come under my wing, and here you are betraying me already. Fine, we'll do it tomorrow. I'm sorry? Sure. You were just 